Are you ready for four straight days of Samsung TV excitement? I hope so, because it's happening and it's happening right now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I just got back from a visit with Samsung in New Jersey where I got early access to some of its 2024 TV lineup. A trip I've been looking forward to since CES where quite frankly, Samsung had so many products to look at and cover at its first link event, it was hard to dive into anything with any real depth. Today though, we're gonna take a closer look at the 2024 Samsung QN900D. That would be Samsung's flagship 8K TV this year. And then tomorrow, well, you'll wanna come back tomorrow to see which TV I'm covering then. And then there's another TV the day after that. And then, well, we'll leave day four to be a surprise. But I can tell you, I'm gonna be talking about flagship TVs all week, if that gives you any clues. So subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And actually, it's gonna be like a solid month and a half of first impressions of the hottest TVs of the year. And it all starts with this four day sprint. So lock in that sub so you don't miss any of it. Now, before I dive into this TV, let me explain what you can expect. The good news is that I got to measure the TVs and do a fair bit of subjective analysis as well. So I have some things to say about the picture quality. Still, I only got a couple of hours with each TV, so these are not full review videos. Fortunately, review units will be on the way pretty soon, so consider this an amuse-bouche to whet your appetite for the main course coming soon. With that in mind, let's start talking about the QN900D. Let's be honest, folks, 8K TVs are a tough sell these days. Samsung is one of the last of the major TV manufacturers putting real effort into an 8K TV lineup. And while it used to be that the best technology was reserved for 8K TVs, so you bought an 8K TV just to have the best, not for the 8K resolution, increasingly, that's not really the case anymore. Samsung's 4K Neo QLEDs have killer tech in them too. But still, Samsung's 8K lineup gets all the goodies. And the QN900D here is at the tippy top of the lineup. So it's safe to say that the QN900D is the best Neo QLED TV that Samsung makes. It doesn't get any better than this from Samsung. So how does Samsung's best QLED TV look? Pretty freaking fantastic. I'll get into that in just a moment. First, just a quick reminder about what's new for this model this year. First off, this may be the thinnest 8K TV I've seen. Thin is still in, even though it seems like we're a bit more forgiving of thicker TVs if the picture performance is there. Here, you don't have to make that trade-off. But really, much of what's new is not stuff that I could really dig into much on this short trip. We're talking a refreshed Tizen Smart TV OS, including a new health app, uh, new SmartThings implementations, and a new Knox security chip, which finally makes this smart TV as secure as your phone, which is more important than ever, honestly. The QN900D also gets Samsung's all new NQA AI Gen 3 processor, which features an on-chip AI engine that's said to be twice as fast as before and sports eight times the neural networks. What we hope this translates to is even better upscaling and cleanup of low bit depth content, like the stuff you get from a lot of streaming services, including Samsung's own TV+. Now, apparently this new processor does a better job of taking low resolution content and upscaling it to 4K before finally scaling that up to 8K for display on the TV's 8K panel. And that's crucial because it's getting that low resolution content up to the 4K level, that's super hard. Upscaling from 4K to 8K isn't nearly as tough, and Samsung mastered that art a while ago. For sports fans, the new AI processor is apparently smart enough to recognize a ball, like a soccer ball, a football, tennis ball, and even something as small as a golf ball, and then apply some clarity to that ball, even as it's moving super quickly across the screen. Anyone who has watched golf on YouTube knows the golf ball is a mess. 
as it travels across the screen. That's because there's very little picture information for that tiny object. And so it comes across as this nondescript white mass on the screen. So I have high hopes for this new processor and that's definitely something I'm gonna scrutinize in the full review. I should also mention that the QN900D here can do up to 240 Hertz variable refresh rate for gaming, which is kind of huge. I'm still looking into at what resolution it can do 240 Hertz. And obviously this is for PC gamers, but for sure I'll be diving into that in the full review as well. What I can tell you right now though, is that Samsung's upscaling has taken a notable leap forward on this TV. I tested some low resolution and low bitrate streaming content on the TV while I was in the room. And I gotta say, I was mighty impressed. Samsung has closed the gap with Sony around upscaling and motion resolution to the point that I think it's gonna be a pretty tight race this year once we start comparing these TVs. As for measurements, here's what I have so far. The QN900D looks extremely good in its filmmaker mode, both for SDR and HDR. Errors were well below the visible threshold across a whole suite of tests. The white balance was excellent, the color accuracy was excellent, and the TV did not over brighten anything in the HDR mode, which is good because that means Samsung is honoring the accuracy that filmmaker mode is meant to offer. But if you want this TV to over brighten things a bit, it definitely will do that for you. And I think that's gonna make a lot of folks happy when they watch dark HDR content because it'll make that dark content easier to see in a room that is anything other than pitch black. Speaking of brightness, the QN900D came through at 2400 nits peak white from a 10% window. Now hold on to your hats. I'm gonna comment on that in a moment. More impressive was the QN900D's HDR color accuracy. Often this just goes out the window, even with TVs that have impressive SDR color accuracy but the QN900D really held it together, even when it was reaching for the stars with far out BT 2020 colors. As for the TV's local dimming system, what I observed was lightning quick backlight dimming, which meant that like when white caption text disappeared or transitioned off a black letterbox bar, there was very little bloom left behind. In fact, blooming and halo effect were pretty minimal across the board. I did not count zones, but even off axis, the halo effect was minimal, which is very impressive. While I don't know the backlight count or the zone count for this TV, I can say that whatever Samsung is using right now is very effective. And it's that halo and blooming control that might account for the TV's perhaps lower than hoped for peak brightness measurements. It's possible Samsung took reduced backlight anomalies at the expense of just a bit more brightness. And I think that was the right call. When we're talking about LCD TVs, there will always be a trade-off between peak brightness and halo and blooming control. Now, when I say lower than hoped for peak brightness, I'm not talking about my personal hopes. Rather, I think there's been some hope built up among TV enthusiasts that if TCL and Hisense are turning out 5,000 and 10,000 nit mini LED TVs, that certainly something like the QN900D would punch a little higher in the brightness category. But I don't think that ever was or should have been a foregone conclusion. First off, those sky-high flagships from Hisense and TCL are sure to cost a mountain of money, way more than the QN900D here. And second, we don't yet know how functionally valuable that brightness is gonna be on those TV sets yet. So. I say don't get hung up on those brightness numbers. The QN900D here is no slouch of a TV. Holy moly does it get bright, almost 800 nits full screen white, which is nuts. In the end, I was really impressed with the QN900D. It's bright, super colorful, and delightfully accurate if you want it to be. Plus, it's just loaded with features, unlike any other TV brand out there. It's a pricey TV, sure, but you sure do get a lot with it. Oh, which brings up a very important call out. If you pre-order this TV right now, I think this deal lasts for a couple of weeks tops. If you pre-order this TV, you'll basically get a 65 inch TV for free. Now, as I'm recording this video, Samsung hasn't sent those details to us yet. So I'll pin those details at the top of the comment section and put them in the description in case you wanna take advantage of that deal. 
That's what I've got for you on the QN900D, folks. What do you think so far? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you right here tomorrow for the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.